Today we're going to take a look at the Stormy Archer RX RF5 5 speed internal gear hub. Now, one of the things that sets this apart from previous models, aside from its size and slightly different ratio range, is that it is a, a rotary shift mechanism as opposed to the uh, previous models, which were uh, an indicator chain type shift, uh, reminiscent of the uh, old three speed models. And the rotary shift has all shifting components inside the rear dropouts. So in order to remove the, uh, the internal components we first have to uh, remove the lock nuts and cone from the non-drive side. Now the internals uh, removed from this hub the same way they do the older ones. It's a ball ring threaded into the hub shell and it has uh, four notches here. Uh, in the absence of a removal tool, my standard go-to has been a brass punch and a hammer and we unthread it counterclockwise. An unused hub usually doesn't have that torqued in too much, so... Okay, yeah, it's moving. <clears throat> Just have to be patient and keep going. Yeah, we've gone almost a quarter turn here. Still quite tight. And there we go. And there's our internals. Now, as uh, with previous models, we have the low speed ratchets here on the non-drive side of the hub shell and the high-speed ratchets are inside the ball ring. You can't see them until we get this uh, further disassembled. Okay, so I've got a shifter attached <coughs> just to uh, run through uh, the function of the gears before we uh, strip it down further. So. Uh, the power flow is the same as it is in previous models of the five speed, so no big surprises there. So in first gear, we have the um, the high speed pawls are deactivated and do not drive the ball ring. So the ball ring, which is threaded into the hub shell, is not driven in the first two gears. We see that uh, there's no driving action. The larger of the two sun gears is coupled to the axle and drives the um, low speed pulls at the uh, lowest ratio. We shifted to second gear. The only thing that happens is we switch from the uh, large sun gear to the small sun gear so that now we have a slightly less uh, overdrive or underdrive ratio. So uh, it's actually uh, less reduction from input to output. We move the shifter to third gear. Now we see that the high speed pawls have engaged the, the ball ring. So now we're driving the hub shell at a one to one ratio. And the hub shell driving, you know, spinning faster than the uh, planet carrier will just uh, ratchet over these pawls. And then shifting to fourth gear. Once again, we engage the smaller of the two sun gears to the axle. So now we're overdriving, all right, so that the driver is engaged directly to the planet carrier, which is overdriving the ring gear. Okay, so the ring gear is turning faster than the planet carrier, which is driving the hub shell at an increased speed. And then fifth gear, we switch from the small sun gear to the large sun gear. All right, and we have our fastest overdrive ratio. 
And another feature of this hub that uh, previous five speeds did not have, uh, with the exception of coaster brake versions, is the drag spring. So the drag spring, we'll see that uh, in more detail when we get it uh, apart here, but the drag spring, as the wheel coasts forward, the drag spring uh, depresses the, the pulls so that there's no uh, ratcheting action as the bike freewheels. All right, so you'll hear the, the high speed pulls ratcheting on the hub shell, but the, the low speed power, the high speed pulls will not. If we held the drag spring in place as we spin the wheel, we'd hear the ratcheting. And the drag spring quiets that and uh, removes that little bit of friction. Now we're going to remove the uh, planet carrier. Ordinarily I'd uh, strip down the hub from the other end, but uh, I'd like to leave the shift mechanism uh, assembled. So I'm going to go at it from this side and see how far we can get into it from here without taking the other side apart. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> See if we can lift that thing off of there. There we go. A little wiggling to get it off. And this is the uh, this is the clutch that in the first, uh, second, and third gear <clears throat> is depressed and disengaged from the from the planet carrier. You see the drive dogs that uh, engage those holes in the planet carrier. And right now I've got the uh, I've got the shifter in the fifth gear position, so it's uh, all the way forward and would be engaged to the planet carrier. Uh, here we've got the the pawls that uh, actuate the sun gears. Alright, so looking down <coughs> into the workings here, uh, I have the shifter selected into the first gear position, uh, which means that the clutch is retracted down in, and that is uh, what disables the uh, pawls on the, the, uh, the ball ring. And also, while we're here, I will just point out the... Uh, uh, the rising pawls that engage the sun gears. Okay, there's actually four pawls. Alright. But we only have two sun gears. There's two pawls for each sun gear. And you'll notice that, okay, so this is the uh, pawl that engages the small sun gear, the outer one. Uh, this is a pawl that engages the inner large sun gear. And over here we have another pawl that engages the large inner sun gear. And here we have another pawl that engages the outer gear. The reason for that is that um, the sun gears need to be torqued against rotation in two different directions. So when we have the power flow going from the ring gear to the planet carrier in the underdrive mode, the sun gears are torqued rearward on the axle. So we have uh, this pawl for the uh, second gear and the one that faces that same direction for the first gear. Alright, so that, no, I got that backwards. Okay. Yeah, so this one, this pawl braces the outer sun gear against rotation in uh, second gear. This one over here braces the inner gear against rearward rotation in first gear. And then in fourth gear, get this right now here, okay, so this one braces the sun gear against forward rotation in fourth gear. And this one over here braces the inner sun gear against forward rotation in fifth gear. So once again, just to uh, recap, 
when the hub is in the underdrive mode, the sun gears tend to be torqued rearward on the axle. And when we're in overdrive mode, the sun gears tend to be rotated forward on the axle. So that's why we have two poles for each sun gear to, to uh, resist the rotation in the two different ratios. I hope I said that in a way you can understand. <laughs> so since I'm not real confident that I explained all that real well in the last segment, I'm going to uh, take another shot at it here with a, with a drawing. So uh, because we've got the, uh, the hub faced non-drive side up, we're going to look at it from that point of view. All right, so here we have the ring gear, which uh, is this animal right here, and the planet carrier. All right, so we've got the uh, the pins or the shafts that the planetary gears run on here, and they're carried within this carrier. All right, so uh, the way the power flow works, as I have explained before, but we'll run through it again. When the, uh, the drive input comes in through the ring gear and uh, the output is through the planet carrier, we wind up with an underdrive situation. So as the driver uh, rotates the ring gear and the ring gear drives the planet carrier and these poles drive the hub shell, that means of these ratchets, okay, we have a gear reduction underdrive situation. So what I was talking about before was the uh, reaction of the sun gear. The, the, the sun gear needs to be held stationary for that to function. And to do that, we have those rising poles on the axle shaft that I showed you before. So when we're in the underdrive uh, mode, and when we have the ring gear driving the uh, planet carrier, okay, so this, is the, this would be the forward direction because we're looking at the uh, non-drive side. When that happens, the sun gear tends to be rotated in a rearward direction on the axle shaft. So the rising pawl, okay, so the pawl comes up out of here at an angle and engages with a slot here. All right, so that pawl has to come up so that it resists rearward rotation. When we shift to overdrive, what happens is that now we engage the driver directly to the planet carrier and now the planet carrier becomes the input and the ring gear becomes the output and now we're overdriving the hub and when that happens the torque against the uh, sun gears is in a forward rotation so now we have to brace it the other way so the pole has to come up and brace it against a forward rotation so that's why we have to have four poles, two for each of the sun gears, uh, one to re reduce uh, or one to resist the forward rotation of each of the sun gears when they're in uh, in the overdrive mode, and one pole to resist the rearward rotation when they're in the underdrive mode. All right. So I hope after all that uh, I've made that understandable. All right, so we're going to run through the shifting action here one more time before we uh, tear it down from a slightly different angle here. So, uh, all right, so we'll move the shifter selector to first gear. And in first gear, we can see that the clutch is retracted all the way. And these uh, the beveled edge on the back of the clutch actually uh, depresses the poles from the backside and deactivates them and then when we shift to second gear we see that we're still in the uh, fully retracted position on the clutch and uh, all that's happening is the the uh, shift poles are moving in third gear now the clutch moves far enough so that these poles can actuate now we'll take a look at the clutch actuation mechanism. And what we have here is a collar, a ring that sits down inside here, and then this collar has a ramp here. 
and a step and then another ramp and a step here and the way this works is when the shifter is rotated all right so in the uh, fully relaxed position it's fifth gear all right so in fourth and fifth gear all right so that's the fifth gear position the fourth gear position this uh, ring is all the way down here and then when we shift to the third gear position we see that ring lifts up onto this ramp here and then as we shift to the first and second gear it lifts all the way up riding on those ramps so we'll just drop the clutch on here just to show how that goes all right so that's fifth gear fourth gear third gear second and first okay so I'm gonna just try and uh, <clears throat> show from the inside view of uh, how the retraction of the uh, ring gear pulls takes place uh, we'll get the drag spring out of the way here there we go okay so these are the the ring gear pulls that uh, drive the hub shell in third fourth and fifth gear and looking down inside we see the uh, the tails of the pulls that all right so when we uh, shift this all right hope my finger's not getting in the way there when that's shifted so that the clutch is retracted all the way all right it uh, pushes on the back of that and Paul is retracted. So that's how the Paul is deactivated for the first and second gear.